Hi everybody, Dr. Lena Rodriguez coming to you from Australia, therefore coming to you from tomorrow. I never really get used to that concept. But first, before we get into what I'm sure will be a gripping, gripping read on November in America, I want to thank personally my tarot students and those who are booked for readings who I've had to move twice in the last two weeks. Thank you for your patience, dear ones. I can see the light. So intrepid viewers will know I've been immersed um, in family stuff. And every day I thank the Lord, the universe, all forces of creation, the pagan goddesses. I thank everybody for the Australian health system. You know, all this extraordinary treatment and a, a big shout out to the Australian nurses and doctors. These surgeons are amazing. They could be making a fortune by just going private. Some of them do. <laughs> but the amazing thing is most of them work in the public and private system. And it's just incredible. And I want to thank everyone involved. And so it's my week for gratitude. But here we go, November, Trump. I was thinking, how do I do this? What sort of spread will I use? How to get the information? So I thought I'd have a Trump line, a Dem line, a GOP line, and a People of America line. Really, really important. Right. So it's countdown now. And Hopefully, don't forget, I'll be on with Dave from Moonride on the night of the elections. We'll be going, I think, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I think. We'll get into the fine print. It will be on Dave's channel. Okay, here we go. November for America. November for America. Interesting. Let's go. So, let's see what's cooking here. This is going to be Trump, Dems, GOP, and the people of America. I'm going to do three columns. Trump, Dems, GOP, the people. Hmm. Oh, that is amazing. Okay, so here we go. Trump's November. Because you can read this this way or that way. So let's jump to the chase. The umbrella energy, if you like, for Trump is um, it starts off well <laughs> and then has a few issues. All right, so here we go. Trump gets, first of all, the strength card. you got to hand it to him. He's still standing. No mean feat if he had COVID. I personally think he did. The The reason he's still walking around is, I think, uh, I know there's a school of thought saying he didn't have COVID and I totally get that. But my vibe on it is he did, but because he's tested every day, he got picked up basically, you know, in the first five minutes, then he has the best quality care in the world. So not too bad a result. Um, and the rest is done by, you know, carefully, or not carefully prescribed pharmaceuticals. But here we have the strength card. Nonetheless, also this is how he sees himself. He has got the strength card. Now, this could be the side of Trump who only thinks about money, whose world was formed by money from when he was very young. But I got a Don Jr. vibe. Joffrey, for those of you who are familiar with Game of Thrones, he's so Joffrey. So, I think this is Don Jr. And 
so something with Don Jr. is going to ha upset the apple cart. But the King of Pentacles, i.e. Trump, the greedy king, right? This is the king. Bring me tribute. Give me your gold, your silver, your wives, you know, give me your land, give me everything. Well, Mary Trump's book, isn't it? Too much and it's never enough. This is the greedy king. So on that level, Trump during November is going to move from president in a, a pretend political sense to the real Donald Trump. It's just about the business and just about the money. Mm. Okay, so now the Dems, <coughs> excuse me, caught under this wave as are the GOP. So here we have the Dems, this is nervously on the night and possibly subsequent weeks of counting. Have we got the numbers? Fighting off, fighting off um, the court cases and the rubbish and the misinformation and the stuff that just falls out of the Yeti's lips. I read today, he has basically done a marvelous job on COVID in America and in fact, it's all over and he did. It. So misinformation has taken a whole new dimension during this presidency, but this is them fighting off the challenges and walking away with the prize, walking away on their own terms. It will be enough. The Age of Cups is walking without regret. It might get more complicated next year as they have to do this, but just going, no. The GOP, on the other hand, gets the card of the burden, the martyrs. The smell of burning flesh will be profound in the next couple of years as these treacherous, self-serving, gutless, absolute, dare I say, bastards, who have propped up this criminal enterprise. So there's an element of martyrdom to the Ten of Wands. They're going to juggle and do deals. It wasn't me. I wanted to leave. Um, I've always hated Trump. Yes, it wasn't me. And what is Mikowski doing? Voting to support The Handmaid's Tale, who's now been waved in. It's a travesty. But America has a lot of work to do. with, the, And this is... Republican deals with Democrats in early November. I will do, I'll do a recap just on Trump in November before I finish. Then the people of America, bless you. The Three of Pentacles, it is about cooperation around money. We're seeing a different relationship or a different conversation is going to be had in the next year and in the next four years. Because in case anyone's missed it, COVID and all the complications are global. Every single country in the world is affected by this issue and everyone's economy's tanked. And you, what are you going to do with the burgeoning homeless, with the burgeoning unemployed, who until six months ago were respectable members of the working class and the solid uh, middle class and so on, everyone's going to have to look at their titles again and go, no, we need to work together, together. And I think globally we've been given this message, you know, 60% of most economies are now casualised, that means people can't plan. Having been casual for 30 years, I, I think I can speak on this subject. So you don't have sick leave and you don't have any of the conditions and blah, blah, blah and all of that but it's not good enough because people can't plan and get on with their lives you hear young people say i can't afford to have kids they're not going to have kids because they cannot afford to why can't they afford to because they're badly paid and housing is not affordable so rent should not be more than a fifth of your income and a mortgage should not be more than i think 25 percent of your income for you to still have a life and those days left you know, with Andy Griffith. So we have to get back to properly paying workers. 
that is people, that is everybody, properly paying people. And you give the odd tax break genuinely to landlords who agree to keep their rents low. They agree to keep their rents low for 20, 25 years, then you get this much of a tax break, not starting at the floor where it is, starting from what you earn. I don't have a problem with that, but you've got to keep that rent affordable for 25 years. Why are, there, why are these people everywhere being rewarded for just being greedy, greedy people? Let them work for it a bit. Go, okay, well, I still make that much money over the years, blah, 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 but it means people can have a life and feel secure. So through all this upset and upheaval and insecurity, I think we're going to forge in the next four years a new way of doing it all. Okay, so you the people learning to money together, Watching your money, but watching your money in a different way. Obviously, it's advisable now because the economy is so vulnerable to count your pennies. But again, I'm going with this bigger rave in the sense that we have to look at money differently and what it can do and more importantly, what it can't do. And I'll remind you of what's going on in the UK. The UK had always had a system of um, free or subsidised lunches for kids and for a lot of marginalised kids that was the one decent meal they had a day but it's important anyway and now kids aren't going to school because of COVID which is why it's such a global lesson they're not going to school so they're not getting their free lunch and the equivalent of the GOP voted stop the lunches in the holidays and one guy started this campaign saying, well, why are we paying for your lunches as politicians? And I think it's a jolly good question. Why are we paying for their coronas and their upmarket everything, but we can't give a kid a sandwich? I'm sorry, I don't understand. And I'm very pleased to report, I think more people will be thinking about this. So that's what this is about as well, this Four of Pentacles. And the star card, my USA card. I'm not even a nationalistic sort of person. Um, inspiration, hope, but also this, the way out of this tunnel of Trumpdom and this tunnel of a falling economy and this tunnel of personal anxiety is to think big, not let your vision get all closed in. It's the opposite. Take 15 minutes a day to think big. I'm a sociologist, trust me on this. We experience this stuff personally. So we think it's just us who's lost the job and just us who's struggling with the rent. Even if you know other people are, it's still that very personal feeling. As a sociologist, we say that's a structural issue. It belongs to society, just like homelessness. Fastest growing group of homeless in Australia, women over 50. That's scary and it's disgusting. So, Trump in November. What's going to happen to the Yeti? Just a quick four card a, a card a week and we'll see where that takes us. Okay, let me mix these cards up. Give them a good going over. So yeah, the UK, same way. You've got the double whammy. You've got the genius proposition of Brexit. How many Brexit supporters are there still now, I wonder? That'd be an interesting poll. Um, so you've got Brexit and COVID. So you've got the double whammy. But everywhere is struggling, but I think out of it comes inspiration and hope. Your car, how's Trump? Sorry about the phone in the background. Okay, now where are we? We're just going to do Trump week one. Sorry. Oh, one card each. So this is week two, this is week three, and this is week four. Right, so he's planning like a demon. Strategies, strategies. This seems rather odd with the Yeti who isn't known for his brain. So I would suggest it's not actually him. I think it's other people strategizing how to contain the mess. Week two, 
he's going to realise the bigness of, of what is going to happen. The realisation has sunk in by week two. The, the world card is about the end of one huge way of doing things and another. Week three, he's going to have a false dawn. Okay. We all would hope that there was going to be a result of the election, preferably on election night, but we're all grown ups and we also know there's such a high chance it's going to dribble on for weeks. Pray is not months. But the third week of November, he's going to have a, a sense of, oh, these court cases we've got, this is going to happen, it's going to be okay, you know. So, so then week four, he actually, I would suggest, entertainment channel only, I think he's going to lose his marbles. On week four of November, he's actually going to regress to childhood. And I just pulled one more card. <laughs> the tower. It's like these first few cards, he doesn't get it. He, he will surround himself only with those who are either too terrified of him to run or are being paid a thousand dollars an hour to be in a room with him they're going to be still strategizing how to break it to him i think this is not his real plan it's how to break the news in the first few days after the election that the game is over the world has observed this travesty that we call democracy in america and so mr president you need to actually get a grip. No, I don't. It's going to be fine. All these things are being recounted and it's going to be all right. Followed by La La Land. Well, there you have it. Intrepid viewers, I love you. And again, a big thanks to those of you who have been so patient with me in the last couple of weeks. All right, I'll be in touch. Ciao for now.